In this lesson, we will learn to handle files. Let's get started. So we download the course files, click download the example files here. That one will download our files when we click the three dots, click download. So if I just resize this, I drag the files to my desktop. You can place yours in whatever folder you want. Then I right click, extract here. So these are the files that we want to sort. Let's open it by double clicking it. Here are the files. So we want each Excel file to go into the Excel folder, each notepad file into the notepad, each word into the word. But there is a built in trap here because we also have zipped files. Let me double click it. You can see that we have notepad files inside the zip. So what we will do is to first extract the zip files and then sort it. In the end, we'll create a nice log. You'll see how to do that. Let's get started. First thing I'll do is to grab this path to the folder. So I shift right click, copy as path. Then I go to Power Automate for desktop and create a new flow. I will call this file handling. You can call yours whatever you want. Then I click create. Let me maximize the canvas. First thing we'll do is to create a variable for the folder path. So I go over here to my input output variables, click the plus sign, click input. Here I have a variable name, I will say folder path. The default value I'll paste in, that was my files folder. I'll delete the quotation marks in the start and in the end. And I'll copy this folder path and paste it in as an external name. Then I click create. So we will split this exercise in different parts so it's easy to understand. First, we want to, let me open up the folder again. We want to unzip this so we can sort all these files. And we don't know how many zip files we got in our folder. So the first thing we'll do is to find a get files in folder and drag it in. So the folder to look in, well, we just created a variable for that. So let's use it. Click the X here and use the folder path. Right here, we only want to find the zip files. So I'll say asterisks, that's me, that means every file, and I want every file name ending with zip, so I'll do this. We can see that we produce a variable called files. I will call this files zip, because we will work with other files later in the exercise. Always name your variables and everything well, so we can easily see what's going on. I click save. Another thing that we can do to easily name and see what's going on in our workflow is to find a comment. So if I search for comment, that one is here in the flow control, I can drag this in. So I can give comments, they will just be treated as comments, the robot will do nothing with them, but it can easily do for guidance for the future you or your colleagues. So for example, if I say unzip started, then I can place all my unzip actions after this and let me copy it, let me paste it in, let me edit it and say end it. So now I have a container, I'll put all my unzip activities in here. So far, I could just get the files in folder. We can try to run it. There you go. You can see that we, if I open this, we have a list of files. There's only one item in, and that's because we only have one zipped file. And let me just, because I will just maximize this, just to have, to have it uh, more clean looked. So now we can iterate through all our zip files. I know there's only one, but we could have five zip files in it, it will work anyways. To iterate to a list, we'll find a for each and drag it in. Still inside the unzip started, unzip ended. Value to iterate. We want to iterate to our file zip. That was the list with the zip files. So if I click the X here, file zip. Each item in the list will be stored into a current item. That's the one we can process. Current item is fine, this is just a name for reference, but I will call it zip file. Like this, I click save. So for each zip file in the files zip list, we want to do something. I want to unzip, so up in the actions, I'll find a unzip here and drag it in. So we need a path 
But that path is uh, one of the items from the list. We only have one. This is this path here. So I can just refer to the zip file. Remember that was the reference we gave each item when we're iterating through them one by one. So if I go here, just click the X, click zip file. So where do I want to unpack them to? Well, I'm, I want to unpack them to the folder path. That's where all my other files are. So I can just click the X, folder path. We will do nothing else. So I'll just click save. Here you can see the power of the folder path. Of course, it's easier now when we just can click a variable. But imagine that I want to move my files, then I can just change it one place that is here instead of going into my robot, change it uh, every time I use that in the robot. Maybe I have several robots and I could forget something making my robot malfunction. So this is a very powerful way to do and it's also an RPA best practice. So now I have unzipped. I will then delete the zip file because we will not use it anymore. So I'll find a delete files here and I'll drag it in. So I'll delete each zip file once I have unzipped it. So click the X again, choose the zip file. Then I click save. So now we have our flow to unzip. Let's inspect the folder. So we expect that this one will get unzipped. The notepad documents will go into this folder and we will delete this zipped file. Let's run it. So I run it, it will be fairly quickly. I go to my folder. There you go. We have now three zipped notepads and no zipped file. So we build the first part of the flow. Now the sorting can begin. Again, we will use comments to better uh, see what's going on. So I'll find a comment, drag it in after the unzip ended. So this one is file sorting started. Then I click save. I will copy this and paste it in, just renaming the last one to end it. So now I have a common container again where I can do my file solving. We will have nothing going on here and we can even add longer comments if we want a better understanding for what's going on. But that's fine for now. So again, I'll get all files. Now I have unzipped it. So I, I want to get all the files in here without exceptions. Last time we only got the zip files. So if I go over here, find a get files in folder, drag it in between the two file sorting comments. So the folder we want to look in, that will be the folder path. Double click that. We will take all files. So I will just have this asterisk. This one will enable us to take everything. It will produce a variable and I will just say files. I will call this files to sort. And again, I click save. So now we get the files. This one will give us a list just like before. Let me try to run the robot. We will do no unzipping because we have no unzipped files anymore, but it will of course work if we added zipped files. Now we have the files to sort list. So if I open this, we can see that we now have a list of 14, actually 15 items because the first one is zero. It's zero indexed. And we can see we have all the nice files here. Those ones are the ones to get sorted. Again, we will use it for each to iterate through each one of the files here and the files to sort. So I'll find a for each and drag it in. So what value do I want to iterate through now? Well, this is the files to sort. And this is why we named it well, so we can easily refer to it. So if I click the X here then I find the files to sort, I will rename the Q and item. This was again, just a reference for each one of the file names in the files to sort. So I'll just say file, then I click save. So now we can do something. We need to ask a question. So let me open our folder again. We need to ask first, we will ask is the file that we are getting through one by one. Is that a notepad? If yes, move the file to the notepad folder. So we'll find an if and again, an if asks a question. If it's true, it will perform the actions inside it. So if I drag an if in here, we will have a condition. So what is our condition? Well, I want to ask if our file name up here, if that ends with txt, xlsx and docx, then I can sort the files accordingly. Let me show you. So if I find here, I can do it in several ways. 
One cool way to do it is to find my file here, then click this arrow, scroll a little bit up, because here I can get, get the extension as a text value. So if I do this, I select, I now have only the extension, and that is, for example, the .txt. Then I can just say, is the extension equal to .txt, like this? Then we want to do something. I'll click Save. So it will only work on the notepad files now, but we will do the same things with each one of the other files types. So now I will have a move files here, find the file here and drag it in. So what file do I want to move? Well, I want to move the file because we found out that the current file, that one was in, has had the extension txt, then we can move it. So if I click the X here, then I'll take the file, the destination folder. Well, that was the folder path, but we want to go inside the notepad. So this will look like this. So the destination folder, well, the first part is indeed the folder path. And then we'll just do backslash. Then I'll say notepad like this. So it will produce a variable called move files. That's fine. We will not use that one for now. So I'll click save. There you go. Now we can ask the same question for each one of the other two file types. And what I'll do here is to find an else like this and pick the one that, that's named else if, so if I drag this one here, because now we will ask a similar question. We will just say if the file extension is equal to XLSX, that is an Excel file, then we want to move it to the Excel folder. So click the X here, click the file, the arrow here, scroll a little bit up, take the extension, that is the text value. So again, is the extension equal to .xlsx? That's the name for the Excel files or the name that the Excel files will end with. So then I can click save. And again, similarly, we will just pick a, a move files and I can copy this one here. So if I copy it, go back here, Make sure you are on the end, then you can control V, it will get pasted in just before. But here, since this is Excel files, we will open the move files, delete the notepad and have Excel just as before. Then we can click save. So finally, we will have another else if. So we only want to look at these three file types. If we drag in an else, then everything else will go into like the last folder but this is fine, we will just have an else if. So here again, we can ask, is the file extension equal to, you know the drill, so the file, let me find the file extension here, here. That one is that equal to dot docx, then it's a word file, so I click save here. Again, we can just control C, go down here to the end, paste it in. Change the Excel to word here, Go in here, have the word, oh sorry, the word folder, then click save. Now let's try to run the automation to see that all these files will actually go into the right folders. So I click run. There you go, we are now sorting the files. Let us go back to the folder, open the word folder, two word files, open the notepad folder, like 368 notepad files, Excel files in here. But since we want to do it again, so let me copy them back or just or pay, cut them back or just unzip them again and delete this. I'll just move the files to our main folder once more because we now also want to implement a lock. So what we will do here is to create three new lists in the beginning. So this one will be the initialization that will be before the unzip started. So again, I can add comments, drag in the comment in the beginning like this. Here I'll say init started, that will be my initialization starts. I'll copy this again and paste it in and open it. Say ended, save. And here I'll have my three lists. So find a create new list like this and drag it in. So I'll create a new list that says list and then let's call it notepad like this and then click save. Let me copy it two times. So I'll say copy, paste, paste. 
This one here will be called list Excel. So rename it. Here, my file names will go for the logging part. So I'll click save. Again here, I'll say list word like this and then click save. So this one will go up in my initialization. So now each time I'll sort the files, I will add an item to it. Over here, I just have a breakpoint. This is just when you run the automation, this will stop here. I will not have it, so I'll untick it. But it's nice when you want to see some features, let your robot pause and inspect what's going on. But I'll untick it. So inside each one of these, I'll add an item to the lists up here. So go over to your actions, find an add item to list and drag it in beneath each one of the move files. So what item do I want to add? I want to add the file because that is the file name. So click here into the list. This is the notepad list. So go find it here. Scroll a little bit down, list notepad, then click save. I will do similarly for the Excel ones. So I'll add item, that one will be the file again. This one will be the list Excel, that one is here. Here, then click save. Finally, let's do the same thing for the word. So I'll add the item to it, be the file into the list, list word like this, then click save. So now we will sort the file and add each one of these to a list. Those ones, and let me just show you how it looks. It's more easy when we do the robot and then we can see what's going on. So we add steps to it. So now we are iterating through each one of the 15 files. We will finish now. And if I go over here, for example, list notepad, now you can see that we have a list of all the notepad files. This will be perfect for our lock. But now again, we need to go to the folder and copy the files up cut them back because we will use them once more. But it's usually a good thing to run your robot over and over when you develop. In that way, you will catch the errors as they appear. But now we have added the items to the list. We saw it works. Now we can create the lock. Because we want to have multiple lines in our lock, we will use a set variable first. So I'll scroll down. Let me just do a comment, drag it in here, say lock started or create lock started if you want to be more specific. I'll copy it, paste it in, open it. I'll say lock ended. Then I can click save. So now we will use the set variable because we wanted multiple lines. I'll drag it in here and we will call this lock because that's what it is like this. So now we just have to say, what do we want in our lock? Well, I first want total files sorted. So I'll say total files sorted colon and then a space. Now we will just do some dynamic thing. So I'll find each one of the list and do a count. So what I want to do, I first found the list notepad here, but I will not use this list. So I'll use this arrow list notepad, take the count like this. So it will look like this. And then I will just have the three other ones. I'll show you how you add uh, numbers to, to each other. So if I click the X here, I'll just find a list Excel, then count like this, and I'll find a word. So list word, then that one here, like this. So in order to do variables and add them together, for example, we only need to have the percentage signs in the start and in the end. So I'll delete each one of these, make a space in between them. And instead of the space, we will have a plus or we'll still have space. That one will be counted as nothing here. So it will be, we will say, add all these three lists, the count of those atoms together, because that one will be our total files sorted. What do you think about the quality of this lesson? Please post it in the comment below. That will help me a lot. Thank you. Then I want, I want to say total notepad files sorted. And that one will just be this one up here, here. Remember to add a percentage sign in the end. I'll say total Excel files sorted like this. Copy this one here or 
find it in your variables manager. But I'll copy it here, paste it in. Remember to have percentage sign in the start and in the end. Finally, total word files sorted. I'll copy it from up here. Percentage sign in the start and paste it in. I'll also want each file name that I want to sort. So I'll say something like this, files sorted like this. And then I will just pick each one of the lists down here. So I'll find a list of notepad. Again, I'll find a list Excel here. And finally the list Word like this. So now I have a log, so I'll click Save. Then I will write this to a text file. So I'll find a write text to file, write text to file here, drag it in beneath the set variable. So the file path, well, that will be my folder path. And then I want to go place it inside the log folder. So what I'll do here is again, you'll learn a lot about working with files and folders here. I really hope you do it with me. Then I'll say log. And now I can have the file name after another backslash. I'll just call this log.txt. What text do I need to write? Well, I just created a variable for that. That one was called log. So you can find it by clicking the X here. Do like this. We will do nothing else. We'll just overwrite existing content. Fine. Then click save. So now we have our files here. Let's try to run the robot once more. Here we are iterating to each one of the files. You can actually, if we hurry up, we can see the files getting sorted. That's quite satisfying. And we will be creating the log. So if I move inside the log, we can see we have a log text file. Here we have our log. We have 15 files sorted, 852, and each one of the file names that we sorted, we have them here. Perfect. But imagine that this robot runs, it will overwrite this log over and over. So let's create a dynamic log. Again, let me cut out the files to the main deal. You can do the same because we will build an additional step on our robot. So the files out here, let me close the log. What we will do to make a dynamic name. We will use the date because that one changes. It will never be the same. So up in the beginning, in my init started, I will have a get current date caps lock, doesn't matter, get current date and time. So I'll drag that in. This one will just get the current date and time and store it into a current date time variable. I click save. Now I will convert the current date time into a text. So find a convert date time to text and drag it in. So here I will take my current date and time. I'll click the X here, move a little bit up choose that variable. In the standard formats, again, we can use a lot of uh, prefixed dates, but I want to create my own for the file name. So pick custom. Here I can have some prefixes, for example, four Y's, that is years, month, that is two big M's, days, and I will show you how you can find these, because then we'll say hours, that will be hours in 24 hour format minutes and seconds. This one will be a unique text because the time will tick up over and over. We will uh, produce it in a formatted date. Time variable, that will be the text, we will use that one. So I click save. Before I proceed with this robot, let me show you where you can find it. If you go to Google and then you'll search for .NET custom date time format, like this, pick this one, and in the documentation, scroll a little bit down, you can see the different abbreviations. For example, 2D as, as we used, that will be the day of the month like this. And two big M's, that was the month. And we will use this in our naming for our robot. So let's scroll down. First, let's change our variable. So in the end, I will say robot ran successfully on colon and then we will use the formatted date time here like this, and then we'll click save. 
We'll also use it in the file name. So open up the right text to file here. And just before the lock, find the variable again. So formatted daytime here, we're using it in our naming convention. Then I click save. Let's try to run the robot again. We are running it. Let's see it's sorting it. It's so satisfying. So sort, 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 and we will create a lock in a few seconds. So here we can open up the lock. Now we have a new lock. It's the same as before, just with the addition that we now have the time and it's dynamically named. Because when I run the robot again, I can try it even without no files. It will finish quickly, but it will still create a lock. That one will be this one. So it is now empty. Fine, we have created a new lock and these locks will just be going in here until we delete them or a robot delete them. Let me show you an addition to this because we use an if here, but we could use a switch. A switch is great if we have an if with a lot of else if in it. Let me show you. So a switch, it asks a question just like an if, but we can just have multiple cases that is else if, else if, else if. So I'll drag this on in just above the if. The value to check, that one will be the file.extension. So I'll find it here. The drop down, file.extension, I'll select that one. So here the switch will take a look at this. So, and then we can add cases for it. We can say, if the file extension is equal to text, then we want to do something. So if I go in here and I'll find a case, drag it in. So the first case will just be just like before. Is that equal to dot txt? I'll click save. So inside this, I will have my two actions. So if I go down here, I copy it because I want to save this for later use. I'll go up here, click the end, paste them in. Now I can disable some of this. This one disabling this if will give us an error. That is fine for now. And the reason it will give us an error is that we have these else if and the end. So I right click on this one, disable actions. Fine. Now we have sorted the TXT. We will add another case for the XLSX. So drag in another case here, just below this TXT. So that one will be equal to dot XLSX like this. I click save. Again, I will drag in the two uh, actions here in the XLSX session. So I'll copy it, go up to the end, paste them in. Now I can disable these three actions like this. And we just need a case for the word documents. So I drag in this case again. I'll say equal to dot docx like this. And I'll copy in my word actions. So I'll copy these ones here go up to the end, paste them in. Now I can also disable these. And since we are not having the end outside the if, we're not having the if anymore, I'll disable this one. So now we have built a switch. It's a bit more easy to look at and we have the different cases down here. Let me drag out the files again so we see that it works once more. So I'll do this do this. It's not mandatory that you use a, a switch instead of an if. It will give a bit more a clean look and it's nice to know that the feature exists. So now I run my robot. Again, we will do just, it will be the same thing that happens uh, before, just by using the switch instead of the if. So let us just finish this and let's inspect the lock. So move, 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 move. Here. For some reason, the word files didn't get sorted. Why is that? Well, let's move up and find it. Well, we accidentally disabled the actions up here. So I will just mark them and then enable them. This is a common mistake. You'll make a lot of mistakes when building these robots. Even I do. That's fine. Just know how to fix them. And if I run this again, we will, of course, only have the two word files here. Those one will go into the word here. So that one's there. Let's inspect the lock again. 
here. So the last lock, we only have two files, it works. We also saw it works in corner cases. Here we only sorted the notepad and the Excel ones. That's because we have disabled the word actions. The next lesson is on the screen, just click to go to it.